Hey guys, this is Vader, and today I'm going to be starting Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney for the Nintendo DS. And it was also, I believe, on the Game Boy Advance, I think, this, but only in, or I don't know, maybe it was here in, the, in America, but I don't know. Anyway. This is not going to be blind. I've already played this before uh, once, <laughs> so I know what's going on uh, for the most part, story-wise, I guess. As for like decision making, well, I guess we'll just have to see, huh? First turn about. Yep. Let's turn that down a bit. Gas, gas. So for those that don't know, this game is about uh, a defense lawyer. And you have to uh, defend your clients in court. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Yep. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Hi, Chief. Phew. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to sleep, Phoenix. I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. There's a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you need the defendant in this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. One of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I own that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair. Oh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. Nick. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta help me. Who took my baby away? Hmm, the person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting into himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Getting right into this. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. 
conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly, concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Phoenix Wright, Larry Butts, Mia Fey. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report. Cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh oh. No. No way. I forgot. I'm drawing the total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know that victim's name. Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. As you can see here, we got our attorney's badge here. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death. 7.31, 4 p.m. Between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m., cause of death, loss of blood due to blood trauma. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim? Who is the victim in this case? Cindy Stone. Cindy Block. <laughs> um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was. Poison, it was a blunt object, which kind of goes well. As you saw, it was blunt trauma, so. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. The statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. The statue in the shape of the thinker is rather heavy. Oh, and I didn't mention, but we have also profiles here. Mia Fey, age 27. Chief attorney at Fey & Co. My boss and a very good defense attorney. Larry Butts, age 23. Defendant in this case, a likable guy who was my friend in grade school. Cindy Stone, age 22. The victim in this case, a model. She lived in an apartment by herself. Winston Payne, age 52, the prosecutor for this case lacks presence, generally bad at getting his points across. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. That is something you'll be doing a lot. <laughs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butt, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me, ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. 
in fact, he had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. I like how a 50-year-old, 52-year-old is using the word dumped. <laughs> she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it, lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm, indeed, she appears to have turned the day before the murder. As you can see here, the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on 7.30, the day before the murder. Murder occurred 7.31, 31st. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all of the wrong directions. Should I wait and see what happens or stop him from answering? Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. It's... Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheat and cheat dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? No. Well, did you or did you not? Okay. <laughs> well, maybe I did, and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? Stop him from answering. I'll send him a signal. Lie. Like a dog. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember. Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Bum, bum, ba -dum. Order! Order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowett, or Sowett, to the stand. Notice the pun, Sowett, Mr. Sowett, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sowett, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran, ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. This one's obvious. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during the blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used, uh, used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per per perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. 
Now, Mr. Wright. Yes? Er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Alright, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in this testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in, his, in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out contradiction, ugh, contradictions in testimony. Cross-examination witness account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man filling an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking that's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I sought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Well, sir, you are wrong. Because, according to this, time of death, 4 p.m., 5 p.m. He said it was 1 p.m. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to er uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, er... This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Yes, indeed. Mr. Solid, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er... Well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, sorry. Ugh. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Huh? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. This one is also obvious. <laughs> then again, well, it, it, it's obvious anyway, even if you didn't play the game. <laughs> hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Yep. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Uh, let's see the next one. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? Okay, yeah, this one. Sir, that is definitely wrong, because according to this, electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Objection! What TV? <laughs> Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery, and this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. God. I, well, er... Uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Solid? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, but well, wait, I remember now. Mr. Solid? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. But my apologies, Your Honor. It, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Solid. 
Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time, I saw it. Yeah, you saw it, Mr. Saw it. Uh, there was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Please tell me, sir. How is this a clock? This is clearly a statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Oh, this music. This music. <laughs> you, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Side. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may? Yes, Mr. Payne? As a witness, Stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was the table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? You bet I do. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment. <laughs> You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Getting closer and closer. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sod, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. Mm. Would the witness... W w w witness? Witness, alright. Witness. Care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... that... that day... I... I never... Look, I... the clock... I heard... no, I mean, I saw... saw... Mm. Wah! Well then. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It, it was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock? Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sot heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clearly if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Sorry about that. Phone. Yay, editing on the first video. <laughs> oh well. I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Saad heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saad, 
try to talk your way out of this one. Ha. Ha ha. You forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What you talking about? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Solid. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all a slime. Grr, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Solid. And I'm going to leave it there as a cliffhanger. See you guys next time for more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney.